Yup, what's good, original crew? We back, baby. We have Why Hollywood Wants Cat Williams Dead. You feel like that? I, I've never thought that. I never thought that. Title? That title, but maybe some stuff that I don't know. Because he be already, you know. But I also feel like Hollywood Speaking don't, the truth. Hollywood don't <laughs> like a lot of, I, I'm not going to say Hollywood, but a lot of people uh, that, that have pool don't really like him like that. Because he's he's not gonna stay quiet. Yeah. He's not he's not one of the ones you ain't gonna keep me silent. I'm gonna say what you know what I'm saying, what I wanna say. Yeah. You ain't finna blackmail me. You like you got you got something on me, just put it out. Put it out. I shouldn't have did it. But with that being said, man, we're gonna find out today. But before we do, make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go if you want to first support. All you got to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoy today's visuals. Like it with a thumbs up. And I, I already know people going to post this in the comments. And if you do post this in the comments, just know, quit, quit, tell them, if you see somebody in the comments say this, tell them refer back to the beginning of the video. Yes, we have already watched Cat Williams' interview. Mainly, see <laughs> <laughs> she ever watched the whole thing. I watched a lot of it. And then watched, watched the thing from beginning to the end. And she watched, watched both interviews. No, we're not going to react to it. So, because people will already know going to be. Y'all should react to uh, Cal Williams' interview with uh, Club Shay Shay. <laughs> you yeah, already I've, seen it, bro. I've watched. Please do not spam it in the comments, man. Yeah. But, with that being said, let's go. Let's check it out. Let's see what's about y'all. Cat Williams recently spoke out against countless powerful Hollywood figures in a podcast with Shannon Sharp, and they are not happy. What makes Cat's expose so dangerous is that tens of millions of people around the world believe he is telling the truth. This man is speaking against the evils of this world. Thank you, Cat Williams. This generation is hungry for the truth. Thank you, Cat, for speaking your truth. We absolutely believe you. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. Now, a lot of what Cat said in this podcast cannot be proven true or false, but because he is funny, a good storyteller, and most importantly, confident with his words, this allowed him to convince millions that he's telling the truth. Plus, we all know that celebrities don't often speak their true thoughts on the industry or politics out of fear of being cancelled. However, some things he said are just straight up lies. I'm probably reading 3,000 books a year from the time that I'm 8 years old to the time that I'm 12. My next project was to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read the whole encyclopedia set, you think you're one of the smartest people in the world. So apparently Kat read the entire encyclopedia and read eight nonfiction books every single day from age eight to age 12. This is impossible and it's a lie. Throughout this entire podcast, Kat sleep. Now the encyclopedia theme could be true. That, that, just, I'm just saying, the I say this, what when it, when we speak on that those things in that matter, you don't know people's life, you don't know what people have done. You can say how ah, it don't sound like, but I don't know what you've done. That's basically what I say. Yeah. Like I can't tell this man what he has done, what he hasn't done in his life. I wasn't there. Even if you try to do the maths, you wasn't there. So you can't say because honestly. Like, after watching the interview and seeing how his family structure was very, like, strict. Oh, yeah. You'll be a, you'll be surprised what happened behind closed doors and how certain people, Their certain parents. And, and how they, you know. Yeah, yeah. some parents, be, you're going to read this book back, front and back, and, and you're going to do a report on it. I've been there, done it. I've had to go through that. Try to figure out certain punishments. And I do know some people did use it because you. Did your mom ever had like the big stats of all the like encyclopedia stuff and all that? Mm -hmm. Like that was in the average black black family household because they believe like oh you got all this you got all this knowledge and you got all these books you know. In boldface lies, which massively contradicts his preaches of spreading the truth. 
Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Kat exists in this middle ground where nobody can really determine if he is telling the truth, if he is lying, if he's telling a joke, if he's on drugs, if he has a mental illness, or if he is clearly exposing the dark and sinister nature of Hollywood. So today, I am going to give you as much context as possible so you can make that decision for yourself. Starting with his earliest introduction to Hollywood on the set of his very first movie, Friday After next, where Cat played the role of Money Mike, but in the script, Cat alleged that Money Mike was originally supposed to be violently assaulted. The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got ripped in the bathroom. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, the problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny. Ice Cube, who wrote, produced, and acted in the film, denied these allegations. Second thing I want to clear up, it was never I would never shoot a scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday, um, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. If you check out any of my movies, they're not raunchy. But it's because Kat said things like this throughout his interview caused fans to cast doubt on anyone who denied his claims. These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. Do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Cat believes he has a more legitimate and honorable legacy than the other comedians he has been associated with throughout his career. These men, Cat says, have formed a gang in Hollywood that actively steal and or blackball young entertainers' careers, which drives them into madness. For 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. All of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Cat only mentions. Do you think Cat was, cause I, like, I know you watched the interview in depth. I ain't watched it as much as you did. Do you feel as though some of the stuff he said was exaggeration or lies? Um, again, it that goes back to what you said in the beginning. With situations like this, would you will we ever really like know what's true, what's exaggerated, what's lies? Because we're not there with these people. We don't have true relationships with, with these people. We are not coming up like as far as like in this entertainment mm -hmm. world with these people to know what's going on in the background. We don't know, but his reasoning for going on here and saying all he said is because his, cause someone came on before him saying other things, yeah, yeah. and he just wanted to clear clear a few things up. Those people that he talked about, the, the person that said something before he came on here, and the other people he talked about, no one else has really came out and like said anything or combated what he said. Only other person besides, you know, Ice Cube going and saying, yeah, yeah. you know, was uh, ludicrous. And with the, mm. with the, you know, whatever, yeah, yeah. he really never denied it. He just kind of, like, made this. Like, passive. Kind I don't like even, yeah, this little type, tra the, a track this or track. something, whatever it was supposed yeah. to be. So, honestly, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm like, there could be truth in it. Things could be a little exaggerated, you know, out of emotions or whatever the case may be. Because even, like, but, when, he's, when he speaks about his, like, the auditions and stuff. Yeah. It, I say this, it not, not as necessarily a. A coincidence, yeah. Because a lot of times you like, damn, Ricky. When you actually thought about it and start looking, like, damn, Ricky Smiley is in a lot of like movies that Cat was in. You know, first Sunday, yeah. Man, Friday after next, and a couple other. I'm like, what? Like, okay, maybe you own the song, and then you like, or it might not necessarily been like said, and that's probably his speculations behind it. Also, even when he went down talking about the stealing of the jokes. Yeah. After you really say, see him talk about that, you like you start looking up stuff. You like, oh shit. Yeah, th like 
that part, like when you start doing your research after that, you're like, oh, that's that that that's true. Yeah. Like, cause you can like date that stuff back. You see it, like it's like time stamped and dated for yeah. you. So, but other stuff, I don't know. Yeah. These group members by name, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Ricky Smiley. But you will notice throughout the video he makes bold accusations about many other massive stars like Kevin Hart and Martin Lawrence. Are they also a part of the gang? Well that's up for you to decide. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in Anyways, let's start with Kat's claims that Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey stole his material. Kat claims that both Steve Harvey and Cedric the Entertainer have stolen jokes from him. Cedric did it first on the original Kings of Comedy tour in 2000, which at the time was the highest grossing comedy tour in history. Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac playing sold out arenas from coast to coast. The tour grossed over $18 million in its first year. In 1999, both Seagram Americas and HBO sponsored the tour. D.L. Hewley was added and the two-year gross exceeded $37 million. And at the exact same time of this tour, Cat was just starting to make a name for himself in Hollywood. He thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. This is the joke that Cat is referring to, which was originally performed in 1998 on BET's Comic View program. Using physical comedy, Cat mimics someone trying to assess why their car just broke down while the music is blasting. The alleged theft came from Cedric the Entertainer two years later on the original Kings of Comedy tour, which was in 2000. The premise of Cedric's joke was that white people are obsessed with the moon and space. He says black people are not, but if they gotta go to space, then they would drive the spaceship like this. We drive a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce and a quarter. Nigga, we, nigga, we... We get us a cigarette, nigga. We get us, we be in a space shuttle, nigga, like it's a 72 dude, nigga. We get us a now, when you consider the music cue, which is not very common in stand-up comedy, that already looks suspicious. Then the side-by-side -side comparison indicates Cedric makes very similar physical movements that Cat did. Cedric says he did not steal the joke, and that if Cat was so upset about it, he had 30 opportunities to speak up. Cat say you stole one of his jokes. Yeah, like I mean, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? It was like the idea of the joke that he was even talking about don't even match up with no timeline. So for me, it was one of those things like- Did you have a conversation? Did you guys sell it? Did you have a conversation? with Kat? I've seen this guy 30 times. Like, dog, if you literally was that upset, upset about, about it, it, like, dog, just why you, him and say, hey, yeah, hey, why you say nothing? Thing. Like, that don't even make sense. I do feel like he stole the joke, though. And he's been def uh, defensive about being addressed, uh, about being uh, addressing the situation. I'm talking about Cedric is. You feel like the joke was stolen? Oh, when I first seen it, yeah. <laughs> what were you thinking? No, I'm just thinking. I was just thinking, like, of other stuff. But um, when I first seen it, I was like, I could see the inspiration. Inspiration. I can, I can definitely see the inspiration. It, and I then, don't understand why, if you are, if you were inspired by the joke to do or switch it up and do your own, I don't know why people won't just come out and, like, be honest and say you, that. Now you, know you want to be passive and make it seem like, oh, I'm the problem and not. If if I did steal your joke, you had thirty times to address the situation or whatever. Because if you be. notice, he never he's never really saying I didn't take the joke or I did. Because because he was just she, like, if it's a problem, you should have been told. Me. Yeah, but also <laughs> also problem. the thing is, it's not like I mean, because he because then he'll also say the jokes ain't the same. No, the jokes are not this exact, exact same. same you, you but then it's an there. inspiration yeah, it's behind inspiration. it. You got the idea to do the joke because you saw cat do his joke and you saw how the crowd reacted so you to went, it. You, you were inspired by it, you tweaked it, you made it your own but let's just, I mean it is what it is. Do you, like, you, you know how many, how, how many comedians have been called out from I remember at one point uh, they were saying Kevin Hart had it was, I don't know, this is all speculation but I did hear that uh, it was some videos a while ago 
that he was sending people out to clubs and having them watch and then other, there other comedians yeah. low low level comedians I yeah, mean like, like up and coming like, or you, like just you would never probably never hear about them yeah. because they probably in like your local like Chicago comedian club New York but they very like up and coming like you do not so, like, know scout and like break down different oh like, how to see how that joke go and yeah. see how the crowd respond to it and we can do we can tweak it and make it better I did I think I heard something like that too Kat says that Cedric apologized about stealing the joke years ago and is now lying to the public that he never stole it in the first place. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Kat 30 times. Why did I give you a pass if you were just gonna lie? So mm. imagine how a young Cat Williams felt seeing his best joke being stolen by one of the biggest comedians in the world on the largest grossing comedy tour in history. We never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. He did four comedy specials. There they're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Noticing all the backlash, Cedric responded to Kat's comments on Instagram. Revisionist history. Regardless of whatever Kat's opinion, my career can't be reduced to one joke Cat Williams claims as his. Cedric added, I'm a grown ass man, and none of that sh going to go like you think. But Cedric isn't the only one that stole Kat's material. Steve Harvey's theft of Kat's jokes is arguably much worse. At the 2005 BET Comedy Awards, Steve Harvey introduced a hot upcoming comedian to the stage by the name of Cat Williams. Cat hit the stage and absolutely dominated the crowd with his joke about gas prices. Because the world is crazy right now. What is gas? $600 a damn gallon right now? I don't care how much money you got. Gas is entirely too high. Used to be, if you put $15 in your tank, you had time to bond with your vehicle. You had time to put the nozzle in and set the clicker and look through your car and clean off the dashboard. Then Steve Harvey did a joke about gas prices three years later in his comedy special, Still Trippin'. Gas, $4 a gallon. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. $4 a gallon? You remember when you used to go to pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Be sitting there talking, be on your phone. Hey, what's happening? Be Same walking joke. around, cleaning the windshield. It's hard to see. And I will give Said credit. At least Said retwisted the joke. Made it into a, like, you was inspired, got the inspiration idea, but you did go put your own twist slightly right, well, with the to the joke. Space yeah, to the, with the direction of it. Steve said the same and damn exact joke. I guess he, I, I guess it's the thing of oh I'll change the the price of what the gas is and I and I change it to look but my thing my thing is it's okay to be inspired by people I don't understand like but and, and, but honestly like as far as when it comes down to comedian like comedy that's that's still something you don't do no you don't steal nobody jokes but I'm saying it's okay to be inspired by people but if you're gonna steal somebody jokes. Don't sit and lie and make me seem like I'm I'm the bad person yeah. or I'm the problem or I'm whatever. Like you making me be the villain. You making yeah. me out to be the villain and I'm not. Yeah, yeah. But I just like says anything other than blatant theft. But Kat didn't stop there. He continued to expose Steve's long history of suspicious behavior. It started with why Bernie Mac quit the iconic Kings of Comedy tour. Do you consider yourself a king of comedy? They consider that. Oh, that. After Bernie left, them same three guys I'm telling you about, the kings, yeah. they came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. Why? Because you shit on Bernie, and I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? You. Now, there has been an infamous beef between Steve Harvey and the late Bernie Mac that That's fans nice. have known about for years. There were often arguments between the four comedians of who should be the closer or finale of the tour. Since Bernie was a much funnier comedian, Steve would get booed by the crowd when he nice. performed after Bernie. Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy, it was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course you got to close if it's your tour. Harvey eventually just ended up being the host of the tour and not performing a full stand-up routine. You know who they should have asked about, like, the, the behind the scenes? I wonder would he ever do an interview speaking about because uh, we was using a lot of, when we was doing a lot of comedy reactions, 
that's where I was going is Walter Latham himself, oh. the the man behind the promotion of Kings of Comedy. He actually yeah. owns, I think he owns the rights to, to the a, Kings yeah. of Comedy tour. That's the reason why he's put he puts the clips out uh, on his YouTube, and yeah. the reason why we was able to react to so many and able to enjoy the stuff that you don't see on the DVD as well. Right, right. Because he owns that that he owns it, mm -hmm. and I think he produced the. Uh, I don't know. I think. The Queens of Comedy Tour, I know he had something to do with I'm that. I'm not sure about I'm that. I'm not one hundred percent sure like the power behind it. Yeah. But I do know there was supposed to be a Kings of Comedy Tour too. Mm -hmm. And I think he produced the Latin Kings of Comedy. I think he had something to do okay. with that. But basically the Kings of Comedy, the Queens of Comedy, like yeah. he did have a lot of hand behind it. Walter Latham. So I wonder would he ever come out and like speak some type of truth behind? Because I would want to hear like he did come out and say something like how how was able to start. Cause he was an up and coming guy himself, and he reached out to him. But who was supposed to be the headliner? Cause I do know Bernie came on last. Tour. Harvey eventually just ended up being the host of the tour and not performing a full stand-up routine because he just couldn't make the audience laugh as hard as Bernie. D.L. Hewley, who was also on the tour, even said that Steve never thought Bernie would become successful and when he started getting more opportunities, he became jealous. You feel that the beef between Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey was because Steve Harvey was getting a lot of network love during the time and Bernie Mac not so much? Yeah, and then Bernie started to get it. So yeah, I think that, you know, Steve at one point was you know, uber successful, and then Bernie started to, because he didn't ever think he would get the opportunity he got, but once he did, America loved him, like we all kind of knew they would, and he decided to go a different way. Eventually, Bernie got sick of Steve hating, realized his worth, and exited the tour, which ended up forcing all four guys to split up. We split up. You wish you would have stayed and kept it together, could have kept it together we, a couple of we, we tried everything, but, you know, dudes, Felt like they was movie stars. I never saw myself as a movie star. Steve basically claims that Bernie went Hollywood and acted too good for the guys. And Kat didn't like that. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? Allegedly, Steve even called the producers for the heist comedy film Ocean's Eleven to steal the role of Frank Catton from Bernie Mac. Ocean's Eleven featured a star-studded cast, including George Clooney, Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, and Casey Affleck, among others. The film became a huge critical and commercial success, earning over $450 million at the worldwide box office. Having a substantial role in a film of this magnitude helped the rising trajectory of Bernie Mac's career. An infamous GQ article from 2003 released when Bernie Mac himself claimed that Steve was jealous of him from the very beginning. Overall, Kat is obviously upset about Steve stealing material, but ironically, he was more upset that Harvey tried to lie and claim that Bernie went Hollywood on the Kings of Comedy, when in reality, Steve was so jealous of his success that Bernie couldn't take it anymore and quit. And now that he gone, you gonna act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all, and y'all thought y'all had one over on him. The king is the funniest. <laughs> Period. Every time. And that's why no audience member was ever swayed. It didn't matter where Bernie went. You think if Bernie went first, he wasn't the king? <laughs> Get out of here. But Cat Williams and Steve Harvey's beef did not stop there. A few years later in 2008, a show promoter booked Steve Harvey and Cat Williams to co-headline a New Year's Eve stadium show in Detroit. Cat entered his villain arc and challenged Steve to a comedy battle on the Jamie Foxx radio show, to which Steve accepted. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. The second that you get on stage, I need you to understand that that's your final time <laughs> as the king of comedy. I hope you got a team of writers. You're gonna need about or seven of them. You can bring the nation. You can bring Rashawn McDonald. You can bring everybody who listens to your radio show. They gonna see the truth. And its name is Cat Williams. Consider yourself warned. What was supposed to be just a... Do you remember that? Consider yourself warned. Do you remember this? I... Not really. Mm, not really, baby. It's understandable. Not... Mm. I remember that. I remember this, man. They, were, they had a real big spat back and forth. Uh, Cat and Steve, it was just crazy, man. It's Cat Williams. <laughs> Consider yourself warned. 
What was supposed to be just a comedy show is now some sort of 1v1 battle dubbed the championship of comedy. And Steve responded with this. I'm not saying he's in trouble, but I'm saying this right here, Jamie. A dog don't bark at park cars. Basically, Steve's analogy was that he shouldn't respond to Cat Williams because he is too famous and successful. So on New Year's Eve, Steve got on the stage and never addressed or made fun of Cat. That was a big mistake. <laughs> Absolutely on the ground. I, I wonder did they run into each other behind stage? Cause it, hey, I gotta run into you. You ain't finna sit up here talking about <laughs> me like that. Like I ain't nothing, bro. We gonna have to see each other, man. But also, cause I I remember Bernie was like he was the only one at the time. I think uh, at the time of the uh, Kings of Comedy tours, like. I'm the only one that didn't have like before he got his show afterwards. Yeah. But I think I I want to say for 100. percent I'm not 100 percent sure, so I want to say possibility that he was like I'm the only one that don't have a show. Uh, but I'm the funniest one out of all y'all because uh, yeah. we know about the Steve Harvey show. But I can't remember if the D.A. Hughley show came before the Bernie Mac show. But I want to say it did because he was like, "How how all y'all got y'all own TV show." I don't have a TV show, but I don't know. Yeah. But this King's of Comedy, but nobody coming to me for a TV show, and I'm the funniest one out of everybody. I should have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which was true, though. Steve. He claims this was the end of Harvey's career. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand-up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand-Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand-up anymore. Now, Kat isn't very accurate here. Steve had multiple successful arena comedy tours after the championship battle, and Steve was already bald by 2008, so Kat didn't really expose him for having fake hair. But is it a coincidence that almost immediately after Kat got on that stage and exposed his biggest hater in the industry, he started his crazy downward spiral? In November of 2008, Williams missed an appearance on Conan O'Brien and was later arrested that evening when officers found three handguns in his car while exiting rapper Jim Jones' a studio in New York. That same month, he checked into the Mount Vernon Inn in Sumter, South Carolina. Shortly after checking in, employees reportedly found Williams stumbling around wearing just a bathrobe and a towel wrapped around his head. When police arrived, Williams asked them for directions to the nearest hospital. There, his family convinced him to seek psychiatric help, to which he was eventually hospitalized. He just said that he doesn't trust anyone anymore, that everyone has turned against him. He wasn't really coherent. Pretty much after this, Cat wasn't seen again until 2011. No stand-up performances, no movies, no TV. The only time he was talked about was when he was arrested. In November of 2010, authorities arrested Cat in Coata County, Georgia, after he allegedly stole $3,500 worth of coins and jewelry. Things escalated in June of 2011 when he was arrested in connection with an alleged assault on a tractor driver. He supposedly conspired with three women who attacked the man in his tractor. In 2012, 
Williams returned to the comedy world with his third HBO comedy special, Catpocalypse. Unfortunately, with the spotlight back on him, Cat fell back into a dangerous cycle as the bizarre behavior continued. In October of 2012, Cat and comedian Faison Love got into a heated argument outside of a Hollywood club over a $50,000 debt that Cat owed Love. During the argument, Cat proceeded to pull a gun on Love that wasn't loaded. On November 9th, his former assistant, Melissa Shag, claimed that he went into a rage and attacked her the month prior. Then police arrested Cat in Oakland, California on charges of suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon after he'd allegedly beaten an 18-year-old with a bottle. On November 16th at the Oracle Arena in California, Cat took the stage while having a total public meltdown. For 15 minutes, he seemed to be under the influence, rambling about nothing while taunting members of the audience. Well, give me 20, nigga, that's how much the album costs, fuck boy. But I bet if you can walk to your car, I can show your bitch a dick she'll enjoy. So why don't you take your ass on over there, nigga, before I can catch you. Or you can pull your bank out and I'll match you. But you ain't gonna do shit but get punched in the face. Then the audience began booing him. Boo. Talking about you afraid to leave. <laughs> Girl, just leave. Just go home. What the fuck? I, bro. I, but also, I would like to see, see it in its full context. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's what was, I was about to like, say. I would just like to know, like, what's. Because I, I haven't seen this. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. These, you know, so I would like to know, like, was something done or said before? Because, like, it sounds like get so much. Kind of like how uh, when Bill Burr did his, uh, the heckle thing in yeah. Philly. It's because he had, like, it was the audience. The audience was the problem. And he came out and cussed, cursed out the audience and went in on the audience. Yeah. Sometimes comedians go do that. If the audience already giving them negativity, they just going to come back with it even 10 times harder. Yeah. And some people just Not making, it. like, no type of... Excuses. Excuses. I just would like to see it because I haven't seen this one. I haven't seen any of this. Uh, any to, of this in its full context. Yeah. On November 17th, 2012, Williams got involved in a police chase while driving his three-wheeled motorcycle and failing to stop. Just a week later, Cat was arrested in Seattle, Washington after he allegedly got into a dispute at a bar in the South Lake Union neighborhood. His arrest came after he missed the first night of a planned two-night performance at the Paramount Theater. That same month, he slapped a Target employee oh, in Sacramento did. for no apparent reason, which was made fun of on late-night television shows like Conan O'Brien. On December 28th, Williams was placed in handcuffs once again on child endangerment charges. Oh, man, K, you cool, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm cooler than a fan. My they took my children from me. Yeah, I mean, How I was, terrible is that? Cat's criminal history does not even come close to stopping here, but I'm sure you all get the point. He was spiraling hard for years, seemingly strung out on drugs or at least experiencing manic episodes. The media called him crazy, a crackhead, and didn't believe anything he was saying since they wrote him off as a madman. But he says he was never under the influence. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, much bigger than you had thought. I have far less play in me than you would like. There seems to be a pattern with comedians in the downward spiral. In 1990, Richard Pryor, who struggled with addictions to women and hard drugs, poured high-proof rum on himself and set himself on fire. His widow, Jennifer Lee Pryor, claimed it was a drug-induced attempt at ending everything. In 1997, Martin Lawrence was coming off the end of his hit sitcom, Martin, as well as starring in the blockbuster film, Bad Boys. That year, Lawrence allegedly had a meltdown in Los Angeles where he ran into Ventura Boulevard with a gun and threatened tourists and random people. Sources claim Martin began taking psychotropic drugs and having violent outbursts on the set of his movie, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Martin would continue his erratic behavior, getting arrested for gun possession and later going to rehab. Robin Williams openly spoke about his lifelong battle with addiction, alcoholism, and depression. Comedian Mark Maron has spoken publicly about having severe depression. Artie Lang and Jim Norton as well. John Belushi, Chris Farley, and Greg Giraldo all died of drug overdoses. It's unclear why comedians seem to struggle with mental health more than others in the end entertainment industry while being tasked with creating the most lighthearted content. Deborah. Well, I could kind of just... What? 
because comedians are always uh, tapped to be the ones to make everybody laugh and everybody happy, but no yeah. one makes sure that they're happy and they're okay. True. You True. know how hard of a task it is to always be having to be the entertainer, the one that always have to make everyone have... laugh because right. that's your job is to everyone you show up no matter what you, and I and I think that's really why certain comedians get to the point where they like I don't want to do the the funny role. I want to yeah. eventually like cuz I, I I get like everybody gets tired of being the butter butter jokes or the one that has to make everybody laugh. Everybody sometimes you you want to do stuff more serious and to take the more serious approach. Especially like when mentally you may not even be at your best, but yeah. I have to get at her because this is my job. This is how I eat. This is how I live. And if I don't so, do that, people don't want to see it. They want to yeah. put you in this box and they yeah. be like, damn, nigga, damn. It's you know what I'm saying? pressure and everything that comes with it. And you it just. Seems you, like it may be a lot. And then you have to bottle up all your emotions mm -hmm. and just so you can go out there on stage. Because don't nobody want to hear your everybody. problems. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, don't nobody want to, you know, make sure you good and what you're going through. We just want, we come here to laugh. You know so, what I'm saying? So if you so ain't feeling good, suck it up, deal with it after, just make me laugh. Yeah. And sometimes, like I always say, sometimes, you know, like everybody's not having a good day, everybody's not like uh, jolly. Just like even us, just because you see a video be uploaded that's been pre-recorded, that doesn't make make it what my mood is at the moment. Yeah. So just because, so you might find yourself commenting something sometimes, and if that person respond back to you snapping off, just know they ain't in that mood for that that moment. Yeah. It's not like you know what I'm saying. It's, don't take it one hundred percent personal all the time, but also y'all have to. Also take the approach of this person is human as well. Thanks. Like, cause I know somebody here come in one time on us to y'all. You're you're here to entertain, so don't get mad when, bro. I'm not your dancing monkey. Yeah. I'm like I'm a human just like you are. Yeah. I I do want to make sure that you are entertained, but I'm not your lap dog to yeah satisfy every need you have. Thanks. Honey, a clinical psychologist who treats performers with depression and other mental health problems said comedians often wear what we call the mask of depression, which helps them put on a more acceptable face to the world. But behind that mask, there is a terrible struggle going on. There is a stigma about depression and oftentimes the laughter distracts from feelings of weakness. Cat Williams has had an extremely rough life, starting with being homeless and alone at age 13. Combine that with the chaotic lifestyle of a comedian, constantly being on the road, late nights, irregular sleeping, and eating schedules, the pressure to constantly deliver funny and engaging performances, as well as regularly dealing with hecklers and sometimes unresponsive audiences who make the job mentally taxing. And on top of all of that, add the potentially evil Hollywood gang that Kat says is actively trying to get him to compromise his morals, but when he refuses, they blackball him and run smear campaigns to call him crazy? That is a recipe that would make any man go mad. So the question is, was Kat trying to escape an evil industry, or was he actually actually a drug-induced madman. Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner, you my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. Go do what you gotta do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house too, where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? If it isn't obvious, Kat didn't want to wear the dress. Brandon T. Jackson would go on to portray Martin's son, Trent in Big Mama's house, where the two go undercover at an all-girls performing arts school. Unfortunately, years later, Jackson asserted that he did the project for money and was unaware of the repercussions it would have on his career. Did you get, like, slack when you wore the dress at that moment? Only Cat Williams. Cat Williams was trying to always say, Brand Brandon, don't wear a dress. <laughs> you know, he, he called you or is this? No, he was saying it in the media, so I thought he was heckling me. He was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. I was immature. Right. I feel like, dang, why? I'm trying to, uh, just trying to make it. And then he was trying to warn me, you know, don't get in the dress. Everything went wrong. It's like everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. Cat. That's true. <laughs> that That is true, though. Yeah. Is it your career goes right? Or it does, or your career fall because mm -hmm. Brandon T. Jackson, which I, um, like you, how you feel, how you feel about Brandon T. Jackson, but they were deeming him to be the next, like, because he came in young, being that 
that fresh comedian young. So they they was like, all right, he's gonna be that next yeah, yeah. comedian. I think even before like Kevin Hart were coming around. They was like they were trying to deem Brandon T. Jackson as the next it guy because uh Lil JJ, mm -hmm. which I forgot his real name, but Lil JJ yeah, yeah. kinda he faded out after having his this, Nickelodeon this, show. Yeah, show yeah. He faded out and he has came out and said, Hey, I want to <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made that pose, so now we kind of possibly got an understanding of why he faded out of Hollywood. He went back into the regular light. But after the little JJ panned out from being the next young black comedian, it was Brandon T. Jackson. Mm -hmm. And after that, Big Mama House 2, yeah. his career shift. Mm -hmm. what, what he was in after that? What, lottery ticket? Lottery ticket, yeah. That was around the same time, but the career trajectory just went... Like, really Sadly, don't hear about yeah. them. But before then, they were pushing them in your face. Like, Brandon T. Jackson, Brandon T. Jackson. I was like, God damn. But I understood it, though. I've been discussing this subject for years because this has been a pattern that many have speculated is a humiliation ritual. Eddie Murphy, Tyler Perry, Jamie Foxx, Wesley Snipes, Chris Tucker, Arsenio Hall, Tracy Morgan, the Waynes brothers have this all dressed up as on. women for TV or movie roles. Just before Kevin Hart exploded into fame, he also wore a dress on Saturday Night Live. And even 10 years ago, Kat discussed this. It's two answers. First of all, let's be very, very clear. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now some of us are against the Illuminati and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them. And nobody likes them. Kat also detailed an Illuminati meeting alongside Ludacris. There was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. It's really hard to back up any of Cat's claims. And even if the stipulation of getting a $200 million deal is that you have to shave your head and sideburns, that seems like an extremely small compromise. And there are no indications that Ludacris ever sold his soul. I mean, he will tell you, he responded to Cat with a rap song. Never been Illuminati, only Illuminati, and I only left with bitches when coming from any party. Afro with the sideburns, yeah, that's my signature. Addictions on the rise, comedians check your temperature. Little Ludo, you said leaving the party. We ain't, you ain't talk about what's going on in the party. <laughs> like let's like like read between the lines. Again. Y'all we gotta focus in between the lines. I ain't saying that. What no, he, yeah, like, I, I said I ain't saying that what he's doing. But he said anytime I left a party, you ain't gonna leave with him. But he talking about what's going on in the it, parties it, it, the, behind them closed doors. Yeah, but um, again, <laughs> like I said, you know, I just you know listen, take in the information. Decipher things, you know. Yeah. I, ain't, you know, whatever. Use your own uh, knowledge of of understanding words, because a lot of people don't understand. Like, you know, what I'm saying, you gotta pay attention to how you how people say things and what people say and how they say it and the wordy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you really pay attention to that, you, a lot of truth comes out. And again, like I said in the beginning, I don't know these people personally. I took classes Was on it that. there? Who knows? I took psychology and I, I and I know how to read contracts very well. A lot of us did. I took did a lot too. of legal shit. So, wording. But, yeah. Very, anyway. Agree. Don't be trying to rush me. Cut me out. The most overlooked comment during the interview was Kat's take on Kanye West. I suspect that we're pretty awful people if we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable like everybody else? 
The question of whether someone's actions should be judged differently due to mental illness is complex and multifaceted, and opinions may vary depending on cultural, ethical, and legal perspectives. Mental illness can significantly impact an individual's ability to understand the consequences of their actions, to make rational decisions, or to control their behavior. Kat is not excusing Kanye's behavior, and he definitely says he doesn't agree with what he says, but he's just questioning why people are surprised as his whole career he gave obvious signs, such as claiming that he was a god, and he was praised and uplifted for his outlandish behavior. Now, Kat has never publicly disclosed any sort of manic or psychiatric problems, but look at how much the world judged him when he was crazy 10 years ago. Versus now, he is saying the exact same things he was saying while he was crazy, but today he is more calm, coherent, and of course, entertaining. Now they are quoting his words as prophetic statements of a wise old genius. Funny how things change. And even though we try to contribute that all it was because of drugs, no one knows if Cap really was on drugs or not. That's speculations and opinionated opinions. I don't think Cat has ever came out and said, and now I might be wrong. In my house came out and said he dibble dabbled, but from my understanding, Cat never came. So we can't put that notion of that Cat was going through a drug addiction or whatever. You can't put that on people. Just because yeah. that's what you think. Sometimes people's personalities just change and it has nothing to do with drugs. So right. don't put that on someone. But I don't know. Cat has always said the same shit. He never yeah. He never uh, divvied away from saying certain things, and right. you, how can you accept his truth now if you laughed at his opinions in the past? Facts. You know what I'm saying? So take it how you want to take it. Yeah. It's all. It's all. But sometimes, honestly, people have always spoke the truth, and the truth come out later, and that's what we've been seeing lately. Is that the truth that everybody spoke is starting to appear? And it's appearing and appearing and appearing, especially when it comes down to Hollywood. Ooh, yeah. so, so don't be blinded out here, man. <laughs> but y'all spend a month up in the comments, man. Let us know y'all thoughts about it in the comment section down below for us. But as always, I do go by the name DJ Kid. This is yeah, we are. Yeah. 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 Yeah.